So I'm going to jump on the train with everyone else and talk about the coronavirus or COVID-19 and how it's affecting my state of mental health. I know that I'm pretty safe. I'm not in that demographic of at-risk people. I don't have any severe health conditions that put me at risk, but the rest of my family does or both my parents and my sister, they all have um, immune deficiencies, I think, that put them at risk. So that makes me a little bit more aware of it. Well, I guess everyone's aware of it. But um, my parents also are in that kind of... They're, they're baby boomers and it seems to be affecting the, the baby boomers the most. Um, yeah, it's just... It's not easy. You, you, you can't escape it. I know I'm not helping by posting a video about it, but you turn on the radio and they're talking about it. You turn on the TV and the news is talking about it. You go on social media and there's posts or and everything about it. And what is upsetting me the most is everyone's reaction to what's being done about it, I guess. Um, no matter what the government does, not everyone's gonna be happy. At the moment in Australia, we're not in complete lockdown. There's restrictions, we're not in complete lockdown. And for me, although I kind of want us to go into lockdown. You, you don't think we should? Although I want us to go into lockdown, I understand why it's taking them so long to do it. There's a lot of measures you need to put in place before you can shut the whole country down. And with everyone losing their jobs, it's, it's going to be devastating. I'm very worried about people with mental health issues and them committing suicide. My parents have are stressing to me that I'm okay because I think they know that I'm somewhat at risk. I don't plan on killing myself at this point. I have so ow, stop that. Do you want some attention? Hello. <laughs> He's so cute. I think he scratches my arm. Let me see if I can catch him doing it. Oh, now here comes Oscar. No. <laughs> Come here, Oscar. <laughs> oh, they're good boys. If I'm on lockdown, at least I have my two boys. That's the good thing. Um, yeah, my parents have spoken to me because they think I'm at risk. I don't plan on killing myself at this point. Um, I have suicidal thoughts, as always. At the moment, they're becoming a bit harder to ignore. Like, I honestly can't think of a day in the past three or four years that I haven't contemplated suicide once, where I haven't had the thought of, I want to kill myself, go through my head. Um, I had a very graphic dream about me hurting and killing myself last night and that's not always nice to wake up to it felt it, you know those dreams that felt very real I um in the dream I cut my arms and when I woke up I had to look at them to make sure that it wasn't real and that may seem really stupid but it felt that realistic that I had to double check and make sure that it wasn't real that I hadn't cut myself and I'd forgotten that I'd done it or that I had done it and thought it was a dream. Um, but I'm very worried for people that suffer from mental health. I think suicide rates are going to absolutely skyrocket while we go on lockdown for two weeks. One, because of people losing their jobs and two, because of the isolation. I'm also very worried about people that are in abusive relationships. It's known fact that during high stress times, 
reports of abuse go up. And so being locked down for two weeks would be a very high stress situation. And I don't think anyone is going to see this video, but if you ever watch this and you're in a situation like that, I'm lucky to not have been through it, so I know it's not much coming from me, but you need to put yourself first. If you're in a situation like that and you're not yet in lockdown, you need to go and stay with someone. Even if you can't leave them completely, I encourage you to leave them completely. But if you can't, you need to get out of it and not be there for those two weeks. Um, again, it's not much coming from me. I'm probably not saying the right things because I don't have any experience in the matter. But in Australia, we had that woman who was in the abusive relationship. She left him. He killed himself and their two children and she died in hospital. So the whole family was dead and it was an abusive relationship. And I think that's kind of... That happening reopened the dialogue of abuse. The one thing I will criticise certain media outlets for was that when this happened, they definitely played on the female being a victim and the male being the perpetrator in all cases. Like they would say, if you're a woman suffering abuse, you need to get help. And if you're a man who's abusive, you need to get help. And for me, that's not good enough. That is, that, that to me is sexist because there are men who get abused and there are women who are abusive. There's women who are abusive to men, women who are abusive to women, men who are abusive to women, and men who are abusive to men. Everyone, doesn't matter your gender, can be on either side of it. And so when we talk about situations like that, I don't think it's the right thing to gender the situation. Because I think I said in a previous video, and I still stand by this, Besides pregnancy and birth, and I'm sure you could nitpick this, but besides pregnancy and birth, there's not one thing that one specific gender only experiences. And again, you can definitely nit nitpick that and go, oh, only guys experience this and only women experience this. But I think overall, not one gender gets abused. Not one gender suffers from depression. Not one gender is assaulted, not one gender is discriminated against. It can happen to anyone. And I think we need to open up that dialogue and make sure that we let everyone know that it can happen to you. And if it does happen to you, no matter your gender, you have a right to be heard and you have a right to seek help. So that that's my little rant. Um, yeah, at the moment, everything with COVID-19, you just can't escape it. It's very depressing. Um, when the whole toilet paper fiasco started, I was thinking, oh, idiots, like, it, I saw pictures of it, and to me, just seeing pictures of it, I was like, oh, yeah, it's happening, but it wasn't very, it wasn't connecting, I guess. And then I went to the shops uh, two weeks ago, Hi, boo-boo. I went to the shops two weeks ago and I saw how empty the aisles were and it was very depressing. And Dad came home today. He needed to go pick up his glasses. And there was a woman apparently screaming and yelling at him to stand 1.5 metres away and how dare he not stand that 1.5 metres. And he said that he was picking up something and she came close to him. So it's it's... People are getting very aggressive. You see the videos online, and again, those are very depressing. You hear the stories. I don't want to say I'm surprised, because I'm not, but the fact that people are still being such shitty human beings when something like this is going on, you know, uh, cars are still being broken into, houses are still being robbed, um, 
you know, police and doctors and nurses are getting spat on by people. And I just kind of go, in a situation like this, how can you still be such a horrible, horrible person? But yeah, I just wanted to update. It's, it is what it is. I'm doing my best to keep my head above it all, but it's not easy. Uh, especially the past couple of days, I've been suffering a few anxiety attacks. Um, I have had stress migraines for the past 24 to 48 hours. But I'm just going to wait and see what happens. I don't know when Australia is going to go on to lockdown. I still do think it is the best thing for it to happen, but I understand why they're delaying it as much as they are. They need to put things in place. They need to make sure everyone's got everything that they need, that they're safe and protected during this. And I know a lot of people won't agree with me on that. I hope we go into lockdown before the weekend's over, but I don't know. And I'm scared of going into lockdown. I'm scared of being at home for two weeks. I go, I was sick two weeks ago just with a common cold. And I was at home for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, six days. I was at home for six days. And I was going insane by day three. I was like pacing up and down and didn't know what to do. Because I need a schedule. I'm one of those people that thrives on things being the same each day. You know, like waking up at the same time, walking out the door at the same time, doing certain things at certain times at work, leaving at five o'clock, coming home, having dinner. Just that, it, that helps me that things are kind of in a pattern. Even though day each day can be different, there's some sort of... There's a pattern to it. But yeah, I wish everyone good health and I'll talk to you in the next one.